It's the uneaten apple on your counter. It's the restaurant portion that maybe you just couldn't finish. It's the overflowing buffet plate when your eyes were maybe a little bit bigger than your stomach. Let's face it, we are all guilty of food waste. In fact, 40% of all the food produced around the world ends up being discarded. That's a staggering statistic with massive environmental implications. I'm Michelle Steele, and in partnership with Hilton, I'm talking to change makers focused on finding solutions to the world's most pressing environmental problems. This is Extending Our Stay. As a global traveler and correspondent, I've traveled the world uncovering stories that impact our lives. So I was excited to team up with Hilton in early 2020 to meet with locals, talk with experts, and explore what it means to live and travel more sustainably. We didn't know then that challenges like food scarcity and food waste would be exacerbated by a global pandemic. Basically, the amount of food that's wasted every day could feed one of us for our entire lifetime times 5,000. And when you relate that to the climate, uh, most people aren't aware that actually 26% of our greenhouse gas emissions comes from food. So that means we're emitting a lot of greenhouse gas emissions for literally nothing. So we're throwing out tons of food, yet nearly one in three people around the world did not have access to adequate food in 2020. That number has been slowly on the rise since 2014, but it jumped by 320 million people under the shadow of COVID-19 as much in one year as the preceding five years combined. This is due to a number of factors, notably economic downturns and inefficient food supply chains. This is Claire. She runs a food bank in Portland, Oregon called Urban Gleaners. The organization relies on donations from hotels like Hilton and others, as well as restaurants and grocery stores in the area. Imagine going to the grocery store and buying three bags of groceries and then in the parking lot on the way to your car, you just drop one, leave it there, don't take it home with you. That is really how much food you're wasting and people don't even realize it. Since the pandemic started, many food banks have had trouble keeping shelves stocked, which means the communities that Claire serves might not be getting what they need. If we've learned anything at Urban Gleaners this year, it's that this is a small piece of a much larger puzzle. We are happy and so lucky to be doing the work that we're doing, but we definitely need help, as do many of the other organizations that are doing the same work that we are, trying to keep food waste down and keep people fed in our local community. Quotes like this make you really think twice about your own habits. But it's not just people like you and me not eating all their groceries. The entire supply chain of food production is riddled with waste. Let's take a simple example. Seafood. Hi, my name is Jacob Harth. I'm an executive chef and owner at Rizzo in Portland, Oregon. Jacob sources his restaurant's seafood locally and uses every single piece of the fish he catches. But for many restaurants, that's not the case. Fish go to processors, best parts get used. The rest goes in the garbage. So one of the main problems with, with waste with seafood is that it comes into the restaurants or it comes you know, from the fishing vessel to the truck that's taking it somewhere and it's already at a 40% yield. It's a small example, but a deeply illustrative one. Because think of what happens when you times that by every restaurant in your city, your state, your country. The one thing that people always ask for advice when buying fish, especially ones that come into our restaurant, they really do care. It's just there's zero information available. As a consumer, the best thing you can do, ask the fishmonger who caught this, where did it come from, how did they catch it? If they can't tell you, don't buy it. I had talked to some really amazing people doing great things, and it all felt very local. It made me wonder how easy it was to actually do this at scale. So I went to Embassy Suites by Hilton Washington Square, just 20 minutes from downtown Portland, where I met Scott Youngblood, the hotel's general manager. Scott has been working hard to show that even a big organization like Hilton can and does reduce waste to limit their operations footprint. In fact, worldwide, Hilton is on a mission to cut its environmental footprint in half and double its investment in social impact by 2030. 
We have to continue to be more creative, more thoughtful, and more practical in our approach. And it's not just about engaging our employees, it's not just about what we can do ourselves, but it's really about uh, creating a sense of community with our guests who choose Hilton because we're here to make a difference with them. You can also ask us what we're doing to reduce waste. Every hotel should have that answer. Every hotel should be excited to answer that question. Hilton works with its hotels and team members like Scott to reduce food waste at every step of the food and beverage process, from purchasing and menu planning to donation of excess edible food and thoughtful disposal of inedible food refuse. You see, because it's about more than just the meal on your plate, it's the time and resources and people that help get it there. We all do our part, learning where our food comes from, buying only what we can eat, and increasing access to communities in need. We can cut down on excess food in landfills and the greenhouse gases that food emits. Every person's actions make a difference. And I know that people like to say, oh, you're just one person amongst billions, but we are still all a part of a greater whole. And we all have a role to play and we all have something we can contribute. We have to see ourselves as a part of something, as a part of a community, as a part of a world. And that's how I think we're going to move forward and make change.